This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash Mr. Mobile. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman, and you are watching Mr. Mobile on Butterscotch.com. Today's episode is dedicated to all my fellow insomniacs who wake up in the morning feeling like you've just been hit by a truck, despite the fact that you got six or seven hours of sleep. So if this sounds like you, and you find yourself wandering through your days like a zombie, unable to pay attention, you definitely want to check out a new app in the iPhone App Store called Sleep Cycle Alarm Clock. The basic premise behind this app is that everybody takes a certain cycle as they're sleeping through the night. So you go from awake down through sort of a dreaming state, and you get to the bottom where you're in REM sleep, or, or rapid eye movement sleep, which is where your real rest happens. And then you kind of cycle back and forth. So if you plot it out in a graph, it would sort of look like this. If you had an alarm clock that was aware of your sleep cycle and could wake you up at the point where you are already more awake, you wake up feeling a whole lot more rested. And that's exactly what sleep cycle alarm clock does. So basically, before I go to bed at night, I set my alarm in sleep cycle for the time that I want to be woken up at or the latest time that I can wake up at. You have to readjust your thinking of alarm clocks a little bit here. So if I set it for example 9 o'clock, I'm saying that I need to be up by 9 o'clock. This will pay attention to my sleeping for the night, and then it will wake me up in a half hour window leading up to 9 o'clock, so anytime between 8.30 and 9, when I'm already the most awake. So you're probably wondering, how the hell does it know how I'm sleeping at night? Well, it makes use of the accelerometer in the iPhone in a very novel way that we haven't seen a whole lot of in order to sense my movement during the night, which shows what point I'm at. So the more awake I am, the more I move around in the bed, the more asleep I am, and all the way down into REM sleep where I'm not moving at all, it can record all of that using the accelerometer. So, as illustrated on the instructions tab, which is the first tab when you open the app, you basically just place your iPhone on your bed, underneath the fitted sheet, up near your head. You leave it plugged into the charging cord. It will deplete the battery overnight otherwise, so you definitely want to make sure that it's plugged in. And because it's plugged in and it's charging, it can get a little bit warm. So you want to make sure that it's only covered by the fitted sheet and not by anything else like a pillow or a duvet cover or anything like that. I usually place it so it's roughly next to my head up underneath the fitted sheet of the bed. And then you go to sleep like you normally would. It'll sense your movement during the night and uh, it'll wake you up in the morning. Now, the first time you do this, if you want to make sure that you get your position correct, there's a test mode. That's the next tab here. And when you place it into test mode, just press start. Anytime you move the phone, it'll make that noise. The more you move the phone, the louder the noise will be. So what you want to do is place it into test mode, position it roughly where it will be, and then lie on the bed and just roll over gently and see if it can detect it. As long as it can, your position is great. You'll also know in the morning when you look at the graph that gets produced whether it was recording okay or not, because if it wasn't recording, it'll look like you were in REM sleep for most of the night. So every morning when you wake up, it will actually produce a great looking graph like that that shows you your sleep cycles for the night. And you can see where you were at different points. And you can also see where you woke up. So I actually woke up when I was fairly awake already. That's the end of the graph on this side. But there are definitely some mornings where at that end point in the graph, I was actually very, very much asleep. And when this went off, it made me very grumpy. So you'll find actually that the application calibrates itself. It takes about two nights for it to do that. So you want to stick with it. Once it's learned your sleep cycle, it's actually better at knowing when to wake you up. So I found over the first few nights it didn't wake me up at an ideal point, but starting on the third night, it actually did definitely get better at that. You'll also notice when you're looking at the graph here that you can share this graph directly by email or on Facebook if you've done Facebook Connect. And it's actually kind of fun to share it with your friends or if you share your bed with somebody, share it with the person who you shared your bed with. And uh, that actually is sort of fun to be able to kind of exchange them and see how you slept the night before. Now, that does raise actually a question that's answered in the frequently asked questions on their website. What happens if I do share my bed with somebody else and they move during the night? It's actually not a problem. According to the makers of Sleep Cycle Alarm Clock, your body in the bed actually kind of isolates your movement. And so when your bedmate's moving, their movements will kind of stop at your body and not make their way through to the, to the phone. So it shouldn't pick those up. It probably also won't work if you've got one of those crazy isolation mattresses with the individually pocketed coils, the one where they drop a bowling ball on the bed and it just kind of bounces in place because obviously your motion won't set off the phone. So you can learn all of these things just by putting it into test mode and uh, you know, lie down on the bed with your bed partner and have them move and see if it detects it and also make sure that it can record yours. 
There are some settings in here, basically two settings. One to reset the calibration, so that's what it learns over the first two nights. The other one is to pick the sound that it's going to play to wake you up in the morning. And it comes preloaded with a bunch of sounds. They're all sort of soft, gentle wake-up noises. That one's called warm breeze. This one's called sunrise. Very peaceful ways to wake up in the morning rather than a beeping alarm clock going off. And the phone also vibrates when it's doing that, so the combination of that sort of soft noise playing next to your head and the vibration is generally enough to wake you up. You might find if you're a really, really heavy sleeper that you want to set a backup alarm just using the iPhone's regular alarm for just after the cutoff time. So if you'd said, I have to be up by 9, you might want to set an alarm clock in the iPhone alarm for, say, 901. The one thing about the application I don't actually love is that to turn off the alarm in the morning, you hit the home key on your iPhone. So you've just woken up, you kind of have to reach under the sheet to grab the phone. That's not usually that much of a problem because it's up by your head. Also, there's a cord hanging out, so you can easily kind of find it and get to it. But because you have to turn it off by hitting the home key, it closes the application. And the one thing that you probably want to do right then is look at your graph from the night before. So the alarm goes off, you hit the home key, and it closes the application, and then you open it up again to get back to the graph. I would prefer that they had put in some sort of button or something that allowed you to turn off the alarm. They probably don't want to do that just in case you turn it off during the night somehow using the touch screen. So they're using the, the hard button here that actually has to get pressed. But I would say it's probably not going to trigger it if it's underneath your sheet. So it would be nice to, to see that change in the next version. So again, sleep cycle alarm clock, 99 cents. Check the show notes on butterscotch.com for a link directly to the application. And I wish you an endless supply of peaceful sleeps. I'm Jay Goldman. This has been Mr. Mobile on butterscotch.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash mrmobile.